You look out on a starry night and you wonder, what is happening out there? What is that that's creating that marvelous sky that I see? And, and that's the sort of thing that man has been attempting to understand in the world around him or her forever. It's quite amazing how the universe around us can be explained in mathematical terms. I got involved in experimental physics and there was great joy in, in making an observation that uh, either fit the theory you were trying to prove or didn't. In the 1980s, I was a tenured professor at Princeton working in uh, particle physics and, uh, and astrophysics. And I was one of the original 16 people who came together to form a collaboration to try to uh, develop the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory project. This group developed concept for how one could make a really significant measurement if we had an underground site and a supply of heavy water both of which seemed to be accessible in Canada. So Queens was looking for a leader of this project. So they approached me to see if I would be willing to move from Princeton to Queens and uh, take over the Canadian leadership of the project. I knew I could do, could do good science here. So the moment of discovery in the case of the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory experiment was, was quite remarkable. There was cheering on a conference call that went around the world. It was an, a, really a, a wonderful team experience. And everybody at the same time realized that we had just discovered that neutrinos do change their flavor, which was going to be a change to the standard model of elementary particles and would be very significant. You have been awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for the discovery of neutrino oscillation, which shows that neutrinos have mass. The Nobel Prizes are actually uh, awarded in a uh, ceremony at the main concert hall. Well, what was wonderful about the ceremony was that we were able to bring a significant number of the collaboration on the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory experiment to Stockholm with us. That day was a festive occasion like no other we've experienced. Oh, it was, it was a tremendous moment, uh, the sort of thing where you think back on uh, all of the effort that you and everyone else put in over 15 years or so, and it's absolutely remarkable. I mean, to be included in a list that uh, has names on it that were my heroes, I'm very conscious of the fact that uh, the work on the SNOW project was done by hundreds of people. I'm just trying to represent them well with this uh, Nobel Prize that I've been more awarded. Those people and their families were a very important part of uh, our success. The area of science that we work in, astro-particle physics, has become a, a, an area where Canada is one of the world leaders. The McDonald Institute, headquartered here at Queen's, but involving 10 universities across the country, uh, has been recognized by the government and supported to provide an opportunity for academic scientists in this field to be able to be leaders in the world. But we're also training young people in evidence-based decision-making just by the nature of what we do. And those individuals, when trained, are of great value to Canadian society, whether they're working in the same basic science for their full career or whether they go into everything from banks to high-tech companies to government. I see a lot of promise in the, the next generation. Uh, and it's now 65 years since I first went to university. I see uh, the same sort of, of interest in these students that I had in my first year. And, and there's some great creativity that comes from students these days that is uh, makes it fun to work with them. One of the characteristics that I uh, answer when asked uh, by young people, what should I do in order to uh, be a successful scientist? The first thing I say is, be curious. <laughs>